Hey guys, this is Optibotamus. I want to thank you for tuning in. The 2011 BotCon has come and it has gone. And much like many other epic and important events in one's life, BotCon, now that it's over, has left a sense of hollowness. Excitement has seemed to have been replaced by boredom. How can you go back to the way things were? after participating in something as monumental as a BotCon. You start feeling a sense of emptiness, an emptiness that can only be filled by the wonderful memories, fun, laughter, and toys that we got at the 2011 BotCon. <laughs> figure from the 2011 BotCon, Physitron. Now as you can see, the figure is here. He does come with uh, tech specs and he comes with instructions, which I'm not opening. <laughs> and it says that his function is a weapon dry expert. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that's weaponry expert. A brilliantly designed piece of firepower is a work of art. Physitron is an overly enthusiastic maker of tools and the genius behind some of the most effective weapons in the Autobots arsenal. In his cozy lab, he makes whatever comes to mind for each strange gizmo he dreams up. He also manages to develop devices that can turn an Autobot into a one-bot wrecking crew. He always keeps a pair of Nucleon shock gauntlets handy. Although Physitron created Optimus Prime's laser axe, is often credited to his rival Skyfall. Pretty interesting uh, bio. Now, basically a lot of people have said that he is the um, Iron Fist figure from the last stand of the records uh, in the comic books. I never read the comics, so I don't have any kind of information on that. But as you can see, he's a really nice repaint. I love this Autobot, this big, huge Autobot logo here on the side. Uh, he's a repaint, though, of the uh, Cybertron Mode Ratchet or Ironhide figure from the uh, Transformers animated cartoon. And I absolutely, I really do like the way this looks. It's actually a really nicely painted figure. Now, initially, I was kind of uh, hesitant. I was like, that's kind of ugly, but uh, it's actually really not bad. Flip around here on the bottom, you see nothing real too terribly different, but this is the uh, vehicle mode for him. Let's get him into robot mode. One of the things that you're going to notice right away is he's got a brand new head sculpt. Typically speaking, per BotCon set, you get about three new head sculpts in either the BotCon set or the exclusive attendee figures. Physitron here is one of the figures that did get a new head, and I absolutely love the way that it looks. Huge props have to go out to Derek J. White and the BotCon team for really making this head stand out, in my opinion. Of the uh, new heads that we did get in this year's BotCon set, I really think that this is probably one of the best looking. I absolutely love his uh, little kind of goggles that he has up there. Just a really fantastic looking figure. Now, as I said, he does share the same mold as the Cybertron Ratchet and Ironhide. So he does still have the uh, the mark here on his arm where the EMP generator would go. And unfortunately, they weren't able to really kind of remold that or anything. But uh, it's understandable. All their money went into the new head. But he does still come with the little, uh, I forgot what they call him, but his little shock thingies here. Uh, which still have the same gimmick if I can actually get it to work. You just push it in. Pew, pew, pew. That's terrible looking. They they extend like that. <laughs> As I said, this was the exclusive attendee freebie. If you were a Primus package holder, you got this figure automatically given to you for free. There was no other way that you could get this figure. You could buy him at the club store. You won't be able to buy him anywhere else except for probably eBay. And I really think that this figure stands out. And I really do think that this is a wonderful figure to give away as a freebie. I, I absolutely love the way this guy looks. And up next is the two-pack set that was available to the general public at BotCon and will be available to people later on at the club store on uh, BotCon.com. And that being Transformers Animated, Toxitron, and Sideswipe. Now again, both of these figures do come with uh, tech specs and instructions. Um, I actually did open up uh, Toxitrons. And it says that his function is a decoy. Subligation am not right of all insentient beings. Toxitron was the first attempt by Dr. Scalpel and Oil Slick to protoform a warrior in an Autobot shell. The failed experiment produced a bizarre duplication of Optimus Prime with immense strength, corrosive toxic sludge cannons, a hopelessly stunted intellect, and a penchant for driving backwards in vehicle mode. So he's kind of retarded. 
Fortunately for the Decepticons, the data from this mishap led to greater success with projects Stunticon and Nemesis Prime. So he's kind of the uh, failed experiment that's kind of like the, uh, the leftovers, I suppose, during the cloning process. Now basically, it's just a repaint of the Voyager Optimus Prime mold from Animated, but I absolutely love the way that this guy looks. I don't know what it is about the coloring on it, but it just really pops for me. It's really kind of gaudy and garish, uh, which is a, a phrase that I'm going to use with several of these figures, but I just really think that this is absolutely fantastic looking. I love the sludge marks here on the side and then on the Decepticon logo, how it's kind of like dripping down. Really kind of cool. Really nice red light bar on there. Um, he still has all the same functions. He does have this thing where you can open this up and put water in it. And if you really wanted to, squeeze this back and he can shoot out water, whichever you really want to do. But an absolutely gorgeous figure nonetheless. Now as for Sideswipe, when we first saw that Cheetor was going to be the club exclusive figure uh, when you sign up as a club member, it was hinted that he would have a perfect uh, sidekick, I suppose, being released with the BotCon figures. Sideswipe is that figure. It says that he's an investigator, and if you break the rules, you answer to me. A hard-boiled, hard-hitting, hard-fighting bot who's been around the block and seen it all. Underneath all his bluster, though, is the same idealist Autobot who has been serving in one capacity or another for millions of stellar cycles. Incredibly observant, he misses nothing and forgets even less. He's little patience for those who act before they think, perhaps because they remind him of his own lost youth. Really cool. So um, obviously this is a G2 homage to a Sideswipe. I really love the way that that looks as well. Really nice black, red, and you got this neon uh, green paint, which I just think looks wonderful. I've always loved this mold. And this being Sideswipe, this is going to look perfect next to my Cheetor figure as soon as I get it. I absolutely love this guy. And here we have Sideswipe and Toxitron in the robot modes. Now starting off with Sideswipe, I again really love this figure. Always have, always will. And one thing that you will notice is he does have a new head sculpt. This is the second new head sculpt that we've gotten so far with the BotCon figures, but this figure isn't why this head was designed. Uh, the actual true intent for this head is uh, coming up later on in the review, so stick around for that. But this guy really is fantastic and it really still maintains all the same, obviously he shoots his missile, all the same really cool kind of elements. Um, I did not mention that he does still have the Autobot logo here that rotates and actually has the uh, the engine. Um, and I can kind of show that off. He, he still has the engine. I just, for some reason, I don't like the engine in the robot mode or in the vehicle mode, um, but you do still have the engine there. Uh, I just prefer having the, the logo on, on the roof, or I'm sorry, the hood of the car when he's actually in his vehicle mode uh, but an absolute cool looking figure very nice no light pipe or anything which kind of sucks but just in general an absolutely gorgeous look to this figure uh, just fantastic now, toxitron for me for some reason just screams i love this guy the only minor and i do say minor nitpick that i have is that on his neck here neck and his head area he's got this kind of a neon green whereas this is kind of like a mustard yellowish green i suppose I would have preferred if his neck was either the same color as his entire body or if his entire body was the same color as his neck. Uh, that's the only minor nitpick. I do, this guy has some wicked light piping. I don't even know if you guys can see that very well. But that's just absolutely wicked looking. He does still have the, uh, the little gimmick here where you can flip the switch in the back and you have his mouth. But uh, I just think that this looks absolutely fantastic and wonderful. I just really think the colors for Toxitron just scream of awesomeness. Now, as I said, this set was available to the general public at BotCon at a cost of $89 for the set. And I do know that some people actually kind of complained about that, seeing how $89 is up from last year and previous year's um, two packs. But I really think that both of these figures are fantastic and wonderful looking. And if you went to BotCon, you had to pick these guys up. And up next, and the very, very first figure to ever use the new Optobotomous Gray backboard is a 2011 BotCon exclusive three-pack Auto Trooper. Now, essentially, you know, the, the, the security guards for animated. And if you like uh, army builders, 
this figure is all you need. And as I said, it actually came with three. I don't have the other two here with me. Uh, I still have them in the bag down down below, but uh, I did open up one of them. And it, again, as you can see, it is just a uh, a white version of the Cybertron Ratchet, Ironhide, and, and now Physitron. But I really love the way that this one looks. This might be my absolute figure from all the figures that we received at BotCon. I just love the color on here. The black lines, the blue, the translucent blue. I really like the Autobot logo there on the side. Just a wonderful, wonderfully painted uh, figure. This is, And this is very white. Like, really, really white. So much that, obviously, I have to use a gray backboard for it. Wonderful silver paint on here. This is just, I, I, th this, this, this is my favorite figure from all of Bakan. This guy right here. It says that the function of the Auto Trooper is law enforcement. We serve and protect. Auto Troopers are the rank and file of the Cybertron Defense Police Force. In times of war, they can be brought directly under the auspices of the Office of the Magnus. Once selected for service, an Autobot goes through a remolding process into a uniform trooper shell, an antebellum model built for endurance and reliability. Created by the specialist Physitron, long mega cycles of training make them a potent force against those on the wrong side of the law. And again, I gotta say that I absolutely love the look of this figure. A wonderful use of the mold. I really think that this is probably, like I said, my favorite figure out of all of them. Just something about the colors just really stand out. The blue, the white, the black. It's just absolutely gorgeous looking. As you can see, he does still have the uh, same head as Physitron. So while they only make three new molds of the heads, <laughs> they really aren't too terribly shy about reusing them. But just absolutely gorgeous. And he still comes with his little uh, shock things. Or you could probably use these as punching gimmick type of things he sent through police officers. But without a shadow of a doubt, easily my most favorite figure from all the BotCon figures that we've gotten. For $89, you got three of these guys. And like I said, if you are into army building, these are definitely the figures that you're going to want to pick up at some point in time. And finally, we come to the last set of the 2011 BotCon attendee exclusives. And in my opinion, easily the weakest of all the sets. One reason being because this set right here was the most expensive. The other two, including the pack that came with the three Autobot Troopers, was only $89. This one was like $92 or $93, which really to me makes no sense. I don't understand why there would be that big of a price difference. Yes, it's got a Voyager and a Deluxe, but so did the Toxitron and Sideswipe figure. Op the uh, Toxitron using the Optimus Prime Voyager class mold, and Sideswipe obviously using the Deluxe Hot Rod mode. So I really have no idea why this set actually actually cost more money and the other reason is because uh this guy um thundercracker now what's wrong with thundercracker well look at him not only is he uh, shattered glass not only is he g2 but he's also action master thundercracker which i really don't know how you can even call him thundercracker he could very easily be rainbow bright for all i care i mean the colors are terrible you know the candy Skittles and their uh, their motto saying, taste the rainbow? Well, it looks like somebody tasted the rainbow and then threw up all over this. This is a terrible, terrible coloring on this thing. Now, I know a lot of people, but for some reason, it's a seeker. So everybody likes it. I, I personally do not. Um, it's got this purple, red, neon green, uh, a little bit of gold on a few parts. Kind of uh, all spark blue underneath there. I mean, this is... There's nothing appealing about this at all. The only real saving grace is this figure, Shattered Glass Galvatron. Now, you guys that are familiar with Shattered Glass know that uh, in this universe, the Decepticons are the good guys and the Autobots are the bad guys. It's like a mirror universe type of thing. And I actually, at first, really disliked this figure. So much that, I mean, both of these I didn't like. So much that on the very first day, I didn't even pick these up. But after playing with a friend of mine's, I actually went back and bought this set just for this figure alone. This is a really nice repaint of the uh, Cybertron Evac, and I think it was the Universe Springer figure. It still comes with the whole um, Cyber Planet key thing that when you push it in here, you get the missiles that flip around. Still can push, uh, well, not even now, but before. Come on, I got it. You can push this little uh, red button and you can get them spinning his propeller blades. And of course, he's got this little gimmick here where you can extend that, 
push this little red button and it goes right back up. Um, very nice figure. I, I did like the Springer mold for this. Kind of look cool. But this is easily my favorite incarnation of this mold. This guy is going to replace the Deluxe Galvatron on my classic shelf. Deluxe Galvatron, go bye-bye. There's Thundercracker's tech specs in his uh, bio. It says that nothing to fear. It'll all be okay. A founding member of Colonel Death Source's Mayhem Suppression Squad, Thundercracker abandoned his civilian post to oppose the Autobots as a resistance fighter. Jovial and friendly, he is the squad's moral mechanism. He pities anything that cannot fly, though he uses mango clams to take friends flying whether they want to or not. He can create a 50 meter wide zone of pure silence, but prefers to fight using his cryonic blaster and drone rockets. Recently, during a routine surveillance mission, Thundercracker picked up a signal coming from the prison at Paradon. He couldn't be sure, but could it be that some type of jailbreak was in progress? Who knows? Uh, so yeah, there's the uh, tech specs for Mr. Uh, Thundercracker, shattered glass, timelines, all that fantastic junk. And as I said, this is an absolutely ugly looking figure. I honestly, honestly, honestly thought when I first saw this that if it was not for the fact that I personally bought this at BotCon, I totally would have thought that this was a knockoff. It's just completely garish, completely ugly, very hideous, but people love it. It's a Seeker, it's Shattered Glass, it's G2, it's Action Master. There's so many different things going into this that people seem to love it. One thing that I do actually like on here, hopefully this shows off fairly well, but he does have a really nice gold paint on his head. Uh, I really love that. Really nice red eyes, blue face. His face really kind of reminds me of Dinobot from Beast Wars. Yeah, it, it really looks like uh, Rainbow Bright's throw up is all over this figure. So, really not impressed with that thing at all. And here we have the Decepticon leader, Galvatron, who says that power is nothing without wisdom. After his brush with death and subsequent rebirth, Galvatron became an even wiser and more compassionate leader of the heroic Decepticons. He uses his new powers in alternate form to manage the battle against Prime's forces on both Cybertron and Earth. His chemical laser cannons have a range of two miles and his hook and grapple is supported by a nigh unbreakable Destronium Tether. It has been a full solar cycle since Nexus Prime and Aquarius left Cybertron for parts unknown, and the stellar spanner built by Alpha Trion subsequently destroyed. However, some strange energy readings coming from the inside of Icon seems to indicate the technology may be in use once again. Now, I initially really did not like this figure. As I mentioned previously, I originally passed on this set entirely. But after actually playing with it a few times and getting a good look at his robot mode, I really fell in love with the look of this figure. This is going to replace the deluxe Galvatron that I have in my classics display. Not only is it a Voyager, it's, it's a gorgeously painted one, and it really looks like Galvatron. Uh, I mean... Yeah, he doesn't really have a weapon. I kind of wish that they actually replaced this with uh, some kind of a cannon or something like that, just to give it a little bit more of a Galvatron look. But this thing is just absolutely fantastic looking. I love it. Now, uh, and again, when I first, when I saw it in person, they actually had these extended up, and uh, these were pointing up as well. And I was like... That looks stupid. I don't like the way that looks. But then I remember what I did with my actual Springer figure by bending these down in the robot mode and keeping these little cannons positioned downward. And uh, that just made it look so much better of a figure, in my opinion. That just really looks like Galvatron. And as you can see, he's got some wicked cool blue light piping. The only downside, I suppose, is he's got this red Decepticon logo, uh, but it's still a Decepticon logo nonetheless. So there you guys have it, the exclusive attendee figures from the 2011 BotCon in all of their glory. Oh, but wait, there was actually one other little figure that you got if you actually attended the 2011 BotCon in Pasadena. The folks over at Creo were actually on hand giving out this wonderful little uh, free sample from their new uh, Creo line of uh, buildable transformers. And what we got was an exclusive 
Optimus Prime Creon. You see that the new Creo construction set, you can build your favorite Transformer characters in vehicle and robot mode. You get the actual pieces to build both of them. Works with most other leading construction brands, so um, if you have that other company's uh, creations, you can use those as well. Really kind of cool. Um, in association with Hasbro, so um, we're going to be getting some really nice ones. Obviously, you see uh, Bumblebee and Optimus Prime. Around here, what else do we got? We have uh, Mirage, we have Jazz, Prowl, Autobot Ratchet, Sideswipe, the Decepticon leader Megatron, really nice G1 inspired uh, looking Starscream, obviously the, uh, what looks to be the movie Bumblebee, 335 pieces, that's a lot, Sentinel Prime, Optimus Prime, and uh, that's absolutely wonderful let's uh let me let me get this guy open and i want to show him off to you i gotta say i'm actually really really impressed with this little guy uh i mean, as you can see really nice kind of likeness to optimus prime he's got the big tires here on the side as well um but one thing that this has that i don't know if the uh the new lego guys have or anything but he's actually like on a ball joint here on his arms and his legs this is actually really cool his helmet removes and you have a, a really kind of creepy weird face but again then the uh, head pops off the arms pop off the uh, little smokestacks here pop off pop that right back in there you can detach him at the torso which is of course creepy um, but the one thing that's exclusive about this as you can see he's got an open chest and he's showing off the matrix this variation was only available at BotCon, and I, I think that this is wonderful looking I love the way that looks uh, he does come with a gun. Really uh, kind of nice G1 looking gun as well. You can set that uh, in his hand. Of course, you can have him probably hold it up here. Yeah. Oh, and I popped off his smokestack. So you can have him holding it like that. But this is a... And I popped off that arm too. It's a Lego, Paul. It's not going to be... Well, it's not a Lego. It's a Creo. But that is absolutely wonderful. I love the way that that little thing looks. And he comes with just a regular block that uh, can be used as a stand. Yeah, if you attended BotCon, this was another little figure that you were able to get your hands on. So there they are in all their glory. All the exclusive attendee figures for BotCon 2011. But stay tuned because I have a review for the actual box set that's still coming up. I just wanted to get these ones done. And I didn't want the video to go uh, too ridiculously long. So until next time, guys, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optobotomus. I'll talk to you later.